Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group YouTube channel. I'm Ian G0VGS. I've heard a couple of things on air recently uh, that made me stop and think uh, and check a few things. And I just wanted to be 100% certain uh, that the correct information was out there because there's quite a lot of information that isn't correct being banded around. The first thing is simplex gateways. Um, somebody was told on air recently, an intermediate licensee was told by a full licensee uh, that intermediate licensees are going to be losing the uh, notice of variation for simplex gateways. That is simply not the truth. And you can see it here on this document, which is off the Ofcom site, who may apply for a notice of variation. Now, yes, Ofcom are going to start restricting intermediate licensees to a certain degree. In the past, some intermediate licensees have managed to get uh, notices of variation for special events, for example, and things like that. Ofcom have decided that's now no longer going to be the case. And all the information about why that is, is in this document. The bit we're interested in is here. The sole exception is variations for simplex gateways. So, the rumours that are flying around about intermediate licensees losing notices of variation for simplex gateways is simply not true. Simplex gateways will still be available for intermediate licensees to run. So the next thing I want to talk about is BAM plans. Now before anybody says it, I know that BAM plans aren't mandatory. However, they are to be followed for good operating practice. Uh, back in the day, when we got our license each year, we used to get a copy of a document called BR68, and that outlined the terms and condition of our license, and also gave us a new BAM plan for the year ahead. You tended to look at that because there would be new additions, uh, for example, 7.1 to 7.2 megahertz when that came in. These days we don't get that document, but you can still find the BAM plans on the web via the RSGB website. Now it isn't the RSGB that sets these, they're set internationally by the IARU. So we can find the information we need on the BAM plans on the RSGB website and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. I'll also leave a link uh, for the information about notices of variation. So let's choose 70 centimetres. You can see this is the very latest BAM plan for 2023. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. And you can see here that this has got the whole of the 70 centimetre band in it. It's really, really good. It's a very easy way of finding your way around the band. It's also downloadable, so you can keep a copy locally. You'll see a couple of colours in here, and the yellow ones are calling channels. More importantly, you can see where certain sections of the band are. For example, repeater inputs and outputs, whether it's SSB or CW, or whether it's FM. It's really important that we try and follow the band plan as much as possible. I heard somebody uh, the other day using a hotspot on 430, and that's in the repeater section. If that was put on an aerial or was close to a repeater with that frequency pair, then there would be problems. So it's really important that we follow the band plan. If you're running a hotspot, there are a couple of frequencies available to you, and they are 434 megahertz. You can see here, low power, non-NOV personal hotspot usage. And there's another one at 438.8. So those are the two recommended frequencies on 70 centimetres. Now you might say, well, that's only two frequencies. So, you know, everybody's going to be using them. But it doesn't matter because if it's a hotspot, it shouldn't be radiating outside the boundaries of your property. Now everybody knows that you can't just stop RF at the garden gate. But the idea is that you keep the power as low as possible so you can use it around your property but nobody else can. 
you see on here that it mentions non-NOV personal hotspot usage. That means that you don't have to apply for a notice of variation in order to use your hotspot. What it also means is that you can't put that hotspot onto an aerial so that it is transmitting over a wider area. You could be causing other uh, problems with other users and things get rather complicated. The thing is, you need to have a notice of variation if it's going outside the boundaries of your property. You can do other things as well to help prevent other people from using it by adding CTCSS or DCS. Under the terms of our license in the UK, if your station can be heard outside the boundaries of your property in such a way that it can be used by another amateur, you have to have a notice of variation. So it's really important to understand that if you have a hotspot, use the little aerial that comes with it and restrict it to 10 milliwatts or so. That's absolutely adequate. Also remember that the radio you're using to access it needs to be on its lower power setting. Well, I hope you found that useful. I know it's slightly different to my normal format, but I just wanted to get a couple of things out there because I'd heard these things on air and I wanted to make sure that people were aware of how to find out where they can operate and operate without bothering anybody else on the bands. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio. Thank you.